and welcome to Touch Base Daily. How are you all doing? It is Wisdom Wednesday, and we are we have a guest that uh, is coming on, Amparo. Uh, Amparo Pam Van is going to be our guest today, but just want to send some welcomes, some welcomes to you guys. And this also, this makes sure our IG folks are in the building. Yeah, you know, we got to make sure the IG folks are in the building. And so I have to send my little greeting. I see them coming on. Yes, there we go. A IG is live. What's going on, folks? Again, welcome to Touch Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster, and I touch base with you every day. And uh, we are have a special guest on our Wisdom Wednesday, and that is Amparo Pam Van. So she should be coming on shortly. And um, But first of all, how are you all doing? That's all. Let's talk about. Let's see. Let's see how you're doing. Okay. Let's talk about you. Let's see about you. And uh, I see in here. I see in here. Gary is in the building. Gary says good morning. Got here on time today. Yes, Gary got here on time. And uh, who else is in the building? Hey, the Girls Club Inc. is in the building. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and I see in here, obviously, we have Gwendolyn, GR, Houston, Jack. Good morning. It's about to go down. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for our guests, and we will get ready to start. Uh, Lauren Johnson is in the building. Good morning. Good people, she says. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I see Chris is in the building. Chris is, uh, he says, I'm in the room. Welcome, guys. Let's see what's going on, on Instagram. Let's send some great, let's send some love to Instagram. Dorian is in the building. Dorian, Mr. Bernard is in the building. Photos by Omar is in the building. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, he says. And um, <laughs> Omar says, I'll support Instagram. <laughs> That's great, Omar. You can keep me abreast of how, you know, keep the people tamed in Instagram world while we do our thing. But if you are Instagram, you are more than welcome to come on over, come on over to YouTube. And all you have to do is simply put in Touch Base Daily or at Ron Lewis Photos, and you will be able to join us in our Touch Base Daily Again, welcome to Touch Base Daily. And you can find us again. Join us on YouTube. There we go. I like using those banners. Those banners are so important. They make everything so beautiful. Okay, let's see here. I um, have more comments. Jasmine says, I commented under my other account by mistake. <laughs> oh, wait, was that the girls club? Was that the girls club? <laughs> no, is that? Hey, 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 hold on. Hey, who's, who's the girls' club? I want to know who the girls' club is. <laughs> yeah, man. So, again, just waiting here. So, again, we got some politics going on, but I'm not going to talk politics today. We will save that for tomorrow with Chris. There's so much going on, but we're not going to talk about it. We're going to leave it alone. And uh, I'm still waiting for my guests to show up. And uh, that's why, okay. Jasmine says, uh, LinkedIn says, user, thank you. Greetings from Serengeti National Park. Wow, wow. We have a guest from Ser Serengeti National Park, Tanzania. Woo! That's hot. That's hot. That is one of my ultimate ultimate destinations in life. One of these days, I'm going to get there. I cannot wait. Okay, so um, guys, uh, let's see. I'm going to go through Amparo's video and, and, and show you some of her work. And, um, and, and I see here, what's going on? Okay, where is our girl? Okay, I'm just going to go, go through that. Let's just, I'm going to present. Let's present. Okay, here we go. And let me get my whole screen there. So Amparo is an amazing photographer here in New York. And um, and so you probably, if you have not seen her Instagram page, her Instagram page is Amparo the Photog. And you'll see a lot of her work here. She does a 
lot of work with hip hop and she is, I mean, right there. And um, yeah, you see all this amazing photos. Let me just, let me just go through some of her photos. And so you can see her work. Now, I'm always impressed by people that are in the hip hop world. I don't know why. It's like my, it's like my alter ego. I'm not, I was, I was always a rocker. I like uh, rock stars and all that stuff, but I always had a love for hip hop as well. But I live vicariously through photos like this. I mean, look at these photos. Check out her work. Beautiful, beautiful work. And every time I go through one of these, her reels or her collections of stories, it makes me feel like I'm right there with her. I love some good photography. And there's nothing like photographing concerts. I love, as an event photographer, I love photographing concerts as well. Look at that. And some more clips. So, if you if you don't know anything about Amparo, go to her page, go to her Instagram, and then also, I want to show you one more thing before I bring her on, and uh, and that's her website. It's photography by Amparo, and this is also going to give you a taste of what she does. Uh, I love again celebration of events. She's an event photographer like myself, and you probably say you'll say. Ron, why would you invite an event photographer, your competitor in New York? I don't see I don't see her as a competitor. She's my colleague. She's my comrade. She's my friend. And when I can't do a job, I'm going to be calling Amparo. Hey, you know what? I can't do the job this weekend, but guess what? I'm calling Amparo. Look, this is what she does. She does event photography, just like I do. We have allies, guys. We don't have to treat other people that do the same thing we do as some kind of enemy or comp competitor. We have allies and we should use them. So speaking of my ally, without any further ado, I'm going to bring to the stage Amparo. What's going on, Amparo? Hello, hello. Grand Rising, everyone. How are you? It's so good to see you. So good to see you, my friend. How so are you? What, you? What are you up to? What are you up to today? What am I not up to? Um, I always say that I'm in editing purgatory, and so I am definitely in editing purgatory today. I have a ton of projects that I'm trying to finish up, but um, I'm preparing for my Utah workshop, which we'll talk about a little bit today, and a few other fun projects that I'm working on. So yeah. I like busy and busy is good. Busy is good. I always say a photographer, if he's not busy or she's not busy, then there's a problem. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I, always, I always start off with some uh, some personal questions. They're, qu they're quite easy. They're, th they're, they're really cool. I think I can handle it. If you were stranded on an island, what food item must you have? Hmm. So I think that you and I both uh, are going to agree here. Pizza is my downfall. I <laughs> do. I love pizza and living in New York, there is no pizza like New York pizza. Sorry, rest of the country and the other 49 states, but New York has the best pizza and wow, does my waistline show it. <laughs> <laughs> you, and my, you and me both. <laughs> If I, I know my doctor is probably like, if you could just stay off the pizza, we can get your cholesterol down. We can get all the things that, all those good numbers down. But yes, pizza, I'm with you. So we will have a pizza party on that island, but you'll be by yourself. Yeah. I'll be by myself. But if we're by ourselves with pizza, we're never alone. <laughs> never. <laughs> if I'm you have person. pizza, I am there. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question for you. Okay. Share three fun facts about you. Hmm. Let's see. I think something that a lot of people don't know about me is that I used to play the violin. And 
I was actually pretty good. I played at Carnegie Hall with the Bronx Borough Wide Orchestra when I was a kid. Um, so that's something that a lot of people don't know about me. Another fun fact about me, um, I'm a mother. It's probably one of my best jobs, my most important job, but I have a 17, almost 18 year old next month and a 10 year old and they keep me hopping and keep me very, very busy. And um, I'm a gamer. A lot of people wouldn't know that about me, but I love playing video games. I am, wow, when I am not editing, <laughs> when I have time, <laughs> I love to sneak a good game in. I'm pretty good on Madden, so don't don't test me. I could definitely see a couple of people on Madden. But oh, another really fun fact. So a lot of people wonder where the van, uh, where Amparo Van Photog comes from. And it's actually a nod to one of my favorite photographers, James Vanderzee. And so I I kind of took a little bit of the, I used to just be Amparo V Photog, and then I thought, James Van Der Z, why not be Amparo Van Photog? Sounds so, yeah. you know, uh, stushy. A throwback to my mom's era. <laughs> you see, I, well, we're gonna talk, we got, we got a great conversation coming. So guys, get ready, get ready, because Amparo <laughs> has a lot to share. So here's something. Um, who is the most interesting hip hop artist you have met in your journey? Ooh, tough question. And there are so many, um, mm -hmm. but I probably would want to give a shout out to so.com. Um, they're the ones that really, really launched me into that level of kind of being able to take event photography and concert photography. So I'd say that they are the most interesting because they've been the most influential in my career. And I would also say Thurston Howell, who is the general of the Low Live, shout out to him. Um, he definitely put me in the right place to be able to attend a lot of low life events and things like that. So, uh, and he's a hip hop artist. So I would say Thurston Howell too. <laughs> so oh, Thurston and Howell the third years actually. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. And so I, I guess it, uh, people in the audience would want to know is, um, first of all, we I know that you were a, a businesswoman making great money, doing great things, human resource, executive. How did you make that transition to, where did, how did you make that transition from, for, you know, being an executive in a corporate, corporate America into a photographer full time? Yeah, so I have always loved photography. My dad actually really inspired me to kind of pursue the photography dream. He always had one of those SLR cameras around when I was a kid and I used to tote around my 110 and disc cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but eventually I purchased my first SLR camera and always used photography as a side hustle. And that was back in the days when I had to use a film camera. Um, I always used photography as a side hustle and would do weddings and would do events and would do all of these different things. But I continued to ascend within my HR career and the money there was great. And of course, you know, being able to really underwrite my entire photography career, unlike what a lot of people have to do, they have to work a certain amount of jobs in order to get that lighting kit, or they have to do this in order to get that background stand. I would just go, okay. I want a new camera. <laughs> I'm going to just budget next month to be able to get it. And so having HR underwrite my photography career initially, it was great because it definitely allowed me the flexibility to not have to rely on certain jobs in order to do certain things. So I can turn down a lot of work. I could say yes or no to a lot of things and be really, really selective. And about two and a half years ago, um, just there was a concatenation of events, I would say, and being in corporate America, one thing that you definitely will learn is that the older you get, uh, and not saying that this was an ageism thing at all, but certainly I think the older you get, I think the less tolerant you are of the BS that happens yeah. within corporate America. And yeah. I definitely saw that 
and pardon me for any HR people who might be in the room, but HR is really a scam. <laughs> it really is designed to protect the liability of the, corp the companies. It's not really designed to kind of help the employees as it's sometimes set up to be. And when I myself was faced with a very unfortunate situation where someone had accused me of doing something that was really unfortunate and disastrous, I decided that I needed to make a, a change in my life. And it didn't seem worth it to kind of get up and have all of these headaches and all of this stress and my kids not seeing me and me working 12, 14 hour days just to have all of this stress. And I took a trip out to Utah <laughs> and mm, was trying to figure out. Yes, yes, share it, yeah. share it. I was trying to figure out what direction should I go and should I continue running this rat race and doing the whole photography, you know, HR thing, or should I take the plunge and follow my passion, which was to go into photography full time. And I took the plunge and never looked back. <laughs> wow. Wow. Speaking of Utah, I know that you are working on a Utah workshop. I mean, tell, I mean, can you tell us about that? Yes, I am so excited about it. And thank you for giving me the the platform just to talk about it. So kind of an ode to going out to Utah and just being inspired by everything that was out there. I met a lot of wonderful people while I was on that journey. And I happened to partner with the right company, the right tour company that is going to enable me to offer this wonderful workshop where not only will people have lodging included and be able to have lessons in included and then also be able to get transported to all of these wonderful locations in Utah, like White Pocket, um, which if you give me enough time to talk about, I'll spend hours talking about it. But <laughs> just being out there um, in these wonderful environments that are, you just never see anything on earth like it. And it's so inspiring to me that I decided to do my very first workshop um, out there in Utah. Now, the good thing is that it's not my first time actually doing a workshop facilitating. I, as an HR executive, I've of course been in, in charge of development and doing employee trainings and facilitating workshops. And so with a master's in education, I figured I might as well still put it to use <laughs> and nice, still be able to train nice. people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will concur. <laughs> Definitely put that master's to use. Yeah. And I loved training. It was one of the, the areas of HR that I really, really loved. There's nothing like seeing a light bulb go off in someone's head when you can explain a concept to them and they can get it. And I love using examples, real world examples to really get people to understand a concept. So if I want to explain, for example, you know, F-stops and I might use a funnel as an example and pouring water through it and doing all types of things to get people to really understand visually exactly what I, I'm trying to convey. I'm a visual learner. So there are yes. all different types of learners out there. I try to definitely make sure that I cater to all, but I'm definitely a visual learner. And so I try to really incorporate that into my training. Wow. I'm, I'm so when, when, when are you having this, uh, this, uh, Utah in-person workshop? Cause you know me, I've, I've never been to Utah. I, it's one of the, I've been Why? to you states. must. I've been to I've been to forty states out of the fifty, and okay. one of the four and one of the ten that I have not gone to is Utah, and I uh -huh. I feel very tempted to join you on this trip. <laughs> you should May seventh through May eleventh, and I will definitely put more information out about that. But May seventh through eleventh, it'll be in Kanab, and all you have to do is get there because I am putting together this wonderful package that not only includes your lodging, which is unheard of. Like most times, you go to a workshop, you have to figure out your own lodging, so it includes your lodging, which will actually be held at an Airbnb that's on site of the same place. Where I'll actually be giving instruction, and then we'll get to go out and shoot. So there'll be uh, a, a sunrise shoot. There'll be an astrophotography shoot. So that means late night. There'll be a sunset shoot out in White Pocket, which has got to be one of the most beautiful places on earth. Mm. If uh, anyone has, hasn't has looked it up yet, uh, please look up White Pocket, Arizona. It's managed by the Bureau of Land Management and um, BLM. 
And that's usually just those great big expanses of land that no one has figured out <laughs> what to do with in the United States. But um, it's absolutely just jaw dropping. But while I was in Utah the first time, I was able to drive, let's see, I started in Nevada. So you can actually, one very cheap way of flying into Utah is to fly into uh, Las Vegas, and then you can drive north and you can actually hit the Valley of Fire, which I did also, which is absolutely wow. amazing. You can see some of the most jaw dropping, um, some of the most jaw dropping landscapes are right there in the Valley of Fire. You don't even have to go to the wave, but the wave is in Utah. So I'm mm. not trying to, part of my workshop is not to go to the wave, but it's to an area that's very close by the wave. It's um, out there in Vermilion Cliffs. And so it'll be kind of in that same red rock kind of area that you see. Wow. The reason why we can't go to the wave is because I think the lottery is only one, I think you only get, 30 slots per day, I think, or something like that for people to go to make sure that they don't trample the beauty that is the wave. Yeah. And if you haven't heard of the wave, look that one up too, but that's the kind of landscape photography that we'll be doing out there um, in Utah. I love landscape photography. You, well, yes, you, it's my first is, love. It's, my, it's, <laughs> it's, where I, it's why I go to Iceland, it's why I've shot in Namibia and Africa and... Uh, <sighs> Uh, Zimbabwe. All on my bucket list. All, we should be interviewing you. Those are all yeah. on my bucket list. <laughs> well, we, we'll talk, you, I'll probably be on your show one day. <laughs> I am developing a podcast. So yes, yes, yes. That I know you yeah. are. So here's something that's really exciting. I think this is, to me, really cool. You are working on a project with Marvel's Hulk Captain America creator, Mark Grinwald of Marvel Time Widow Cat Schuler and uh, yes. Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. Tell me, tell us what is that about? I mean, first yeah. of all, to be connected to the wife of the creator of the Hulk and Captain America. She's amazing. She's amazing. And I very affectionately refer to her as my fairy godmother. Um because Kat Schuler has done so many wonderful things for me. But I actually got sent on an assignment to go and cover New York Fashion Week and she was doing a show and I was covering it from the angle of black cosplayers. And I hadn't even been introduced to this whole idea of cosplay and wasn't really very familiar with it. But I went to this show and I met Kat Schuler at this show. She is, she is anyone who knows Kat Schuler, she is an energy. She is something to behold. She is just someone who, when you meet her, you ever meet someone and their spirit just vibes with yours. They just, something about them is just so warm and inviting. And she was that for me. And so I went up to her and she had this beautiful gold dress. I'll never forget. She looked like, um, I don't know if you remember in The Wiz, <laughs> the movie The Wiz, when yes. Glenda the Good Witch came up at the end. Yes. She was all sparkly and stuff. That's what <laughs> Kat Schuler kind of reminded me of that night. And <laughs> But ever since then, I have just been kind of hooked to her. She's She has like a, a magnetic presence about her. And I want to do every and anything that I can do to support things that she does. So she puts on these really wonderful fashion shows. I just did a show with her um, in November. November at the Brooklyn Sheridan. I'm always in Brooklyn, even though I, I even though I, I always complain about having to go to Brooklyn and you're in Brooklyn and I always talk Brooklyn about how some of my, my favorite house. people Hello. are in Brooklyn. Always, <laughs> always, always in the house. But um, I did this show with her in November of showcasing Lord Proverbs and anyone who hasn't seen any of his designs. I actually, in some of my posts recently, I've been putting up some of his works. He makes these amazing coats and, you know, these other fashions. Um, but through Cat, I've been able to work with Rick Davey for uh, Fashion Week Brooklyn. And wow. I've been able to um, do a lot of really cool things within the fashion space. And so I am going to be doing some shows with her coming up at the Renaissance Hotel during New York Fashion Week. And then I think there's going to be like a weekly show thereafter. But she and I are doing a lot of wonderful projects together because she is something to behold. She is just such an amazing wow. person to work with. And her energy is just like, 
ah, she's my tribe. She's my people. People who get excited <laughs> about things and that are creative, like they get my inspiration going. And those are the kind of people that I love being around. I don't want to be around people who draw down my energy and who uh, are like yeah. energy zappers. And I'm trying to stay away from those people. I'm trying to I stay like with that. people. I who... like your term, energy zappers. <laughs> <laughs> Energy zappers. There's a there's a couple of those walking around the streets of New York. <laughs> yes, there are too many of them. Too many mm. of them. And I really, you know, two and a half years ago, I really, really made such a conscious choice to change my life. And so, Cat is one of those people whom I met within, you know, the last two and a half years of my life since I jumped headfirst into this photography career. And wow. she has really done some amazing things for me. And I'm starting to even just get emotional thinking about it. But, you know, I had, there was a time and I'll, I'll just share this because I love your community and I'm all about being transparent. But um, two and a half years ago, my life was very different. I was working in HR and I had this great executive job. And then I, I was also married. <laughs> and uh, two and a half years ago, I decided to change my career. And then two years ago, I separated from my husband and mm. it was probably one of the most traumatic and one of the most difficult things that I had ever gone through in my life. But Kat, um, during that time, like she knew that one of the best things to do was to get me working and to keep me working wow. and to keep me busy so that I wasn't, you know, at home and getting depressed and, you know, so sad about my situation, but she kept me working. Like she would make wow. sure, okay, no, I got some people for you to shoot. I have some money for you to make your kids need to eat. Let's go, <laughs> you know? And wow. she would just do some amazing things for me. So I am forever indebted to her. She's just an amazing person, just an amazing being, you know? Wow. That Come is, on, thank you, Serena. That is so... I mean, again, it's it, it's amazing as photographers, we meet these incredible people along the way and, and, and they really either speak into our lives or they help shape our lives or they help navigate our path as we take on this journey as photographers. And, and like myself, you know, like yourself, I've come out of the corporate America retail and, um, and you dive into this industry and you are, you know, especially if you, if you dive in later in life, you're like, well, okay, I'm here. And where do I go? What do I do? Who do I talk to? And it's always nice if someone takes you by the hand and kind of like leads you and help you along the way. It is the greatest, I think it's one of the greatest things about our journey as, a, as photographers. And that is Kat. And she's done that not only for me, but I've seen her do it with so many other countless people with designers and models and other photographers and just other people with whom all people have to say is that it's Kat Schuler. She asked me to do to cover um, a fashion show during New York Fashion Week, and I didn't have mm -hmm. any press credentials. I didn't have anything. She said, "Just go in and tell them <laughs> that Kat Schuler sent you." And I'm like, "Really? <laughs> That's okay. it. I'm gonna and use I'm that. Thinking, like, I'm using that this Fashion Week. No, I need to meet Kat." <laughs> <laughs> You should, as a matter of fact, when I told her that I was coming on your show, she said, I love Ron. She actually knows you. So, oh, you know, definitely I have to get together with you guys somehow to, to get you to guys in a brunch or a lunch. lunch or something. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm always surprised when someone says they know me. It was so funny yesterday. I had two friends send me a text from um, PPA uh, Image USA. They're having their event this week. And, yeah. uh, and someone sent me by phone. They're like, Ron, check us out. You're known here at Image. And I was like, who knows me at Image? Like, I'm in New York. I'm just a small town. Kentucky. In New York. I think it's in Kentucky this year too, right? Yeah. It was It was so weird <laughs> when they were saying it. And uh, one was my neighbor and another, uh, they're both photographers and they were, they're both out there. And, uh, but it's always, yeah. I, I didn't know Kat knew me. I did not know. Yeah, <laughs> you know? she does. And we probably have crossed paths during Fashion Week because I've I photographed, uh, especially for early in my career, is when I I did Fashion Week and I wanted to build a portfolio. So I literally my first Fashion Week show, I'll never forget. I was like, 
there was no room for the press pass. The press passes were closed. It was like no press passes. I'm a new photographer. I had never done this before. And so I bought a VIP ticket. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a VIP ticket so I could sit on the front row Whoa. and photograph the show. And now that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, that was my friend was like, I'm gonna buy this ticket. I'm gonna, I'm gonna photograph um fashion week. And it's oh, wow. so it, was, it was that it was those photos that made it to my portfolio that then several photo um fashion houses did start calling me the year after. And they were like, Oh, oh I love man. your work. I love this. This was great. Folks. Are you coming back this year? You have an invite. Uh they send me invitations every year. And for that particular uh, fashion house, and um, but yeah, it's just um, it's you know, you do what you have to do to get your name out there. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that for Fashion Week, and one of the things that you know, I think that sometimes my family doesn't always understand. It's like you go to New York Fashion Week and you don't get paid for it. And I'm like, nobody gets paid. <laughs> no one gets <laughs> paid at Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets paid to go to New York Fashion Week, but the number yes. of people that you meet, you know, if you can meet and rub shoulders with the cat shoelers of the world, right? Exactly. Like if you can if you can meet other photographers like yourself. Um, I meet a lot of photographers, and to me, it's so, very similarly to you. I don't yeah. look at it as competition. I think that the only photographer who I'm ever in competition with is myself. I'm always looking back at my own wait, work. Wait, 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 can I pause you on that one? I have to say, could you please say that again? <laughs> <laughs> say yes. That again. I, Yes, um, the only photographer whom I'm in competition with is myself. And that's to make sure that I am getting better based on what my own standards are at that time. Like you ever go back and look at work that you did and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I sold that to someone. I can't believe, <laughs> you know, I look back at my, my early landscape work all the time and I go, wow, I wonder what would have happened if I would have just crouched down a little bit lower and went a little to the left or I do this all the time, but I think that it's it's really good to just know that you're not in competition with any other photographers. There are so many other photographers that are out there and you can learn so much yes. from them. Yes. I find myself just being, I, I think one of the things that also helped me was certainly, I think Deb, uh, Debbie, Deb Landscapes is the one who put me yes, onto this our community. Debbie, our Debbie in our community. Yeah, and she's the one because she was, we were following each other and, she, I think, put me up for one of your review, your Friday, um, Focus Fridays. And I became introduced to your community. And it was so incredibly inspiring to me, just because I also had to kind of get out of my own head with, uh, I think, a lot of photographers experience imposter syndrome. And I certainly do. I still do to this day. The other day, we a photographer do. friend. We all do. <laughs> a photographer friend of mine, I was explaining to him some frustrations that I was having working with an artist. And he said to me, you know, I don't think that you realize that you don't have to work with artists that are like on this level anymore. Like you kind of have elevated a little bit past where you think that you are. And I'm like, really? You know, you see me like that? Sometimes I don't necessarily see myself as that because again, I'm always comparing myself to me, not against what other people are doing, but it makes me feel great to be in a community like this and where I can share information and share my knowledge. And if I can't lift as I climb, right? If I can't help other people yes. get to where I'm going, then what is the point? What's the point of me even doing mm -hmm. all of this? You know, yes. me, I, I can't have all of these things and know how to do all of this stuff and then see other people struggling with knowing how to do it and not want to help them too. Especially if it's something like landscapes, that's my first love and mm. I want to do all the time. Of course, I, I want to teach people how to do more. <laughs> I'm going to find a way to go on this Utah trip. I'm finding a way. Anyway, here's, here's another thought. I mean, here's another thing about you that I just found out and I didn't know about. And that is Amparo directed her first music video. I did. Oh, me <laughs> I did. That. How in the world did you end up directing a music video? Very, very, very cool story. So first, shout out to Demigod. Um, he's a Rough Riders ambassador. And um, I met him at the 5x5 concert series in the Bronx. And again, here's one of those events where I was covering for so and out there, you know, doing my photography thing and happened to meet 
somebody who was really, really compelling. And again, somebody who is very interesting, very fascinating. I kind of gravitate towards people whose spirit just kind of like moves me, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's a very dynamic, very interesting person. And he really, you know, as I kind of got to know him and he's talking to me a little bit more about things like the Morris sciences, which we can get into a whole nother day, but just really kind of opening up my eyes to things that perhaps I wasn't necessarily interested in before or wasn't necessarily seeing before. Mm -hmm. um, it really kind of allowed me to engage with him in such a way that we actually started thinking about working on different projects together. And so he has this company, More Money Entertainment, and he has a song called 100 Moors. And he said, I really want to kind of get this project going and I really need someone to direct it. And I'm going, hey, I have nothing better to do than editing purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sure, wow. let me coordinate working on this music video with you. And it was actually wonderful. Um, we got to do a few different sets, a few different scenes. It's actually going to be released within the next couple of weeks. But, um, you know, we got to work with um, some of the people down at the Asbury Temple, the Moorish Temple down in Asbury, New Jersey. They were wonderful. They were amazing. They came out at sunrise for some of the sets. Um, we got to work with some of the Rough Riders, uh, the motorcycle the uh, motorcycle team and they did a lot of came out and did a lot wow. of tricks and stunts for us. And then of course, just being with him and his, he's so incredibly magnetic and his personality is so incredibly engaging that it was great to just be on set with that kind of a creative and to work with my team. I had, I pulled in some members of my own team, my PA mm -hmm. and a videographer to work with me and they were just wonderful. So it was great to be able to really direct my first music video and wow. hopefully there'll be more of those to come. But yeah, the last quarter of 2023, that's what I was really, 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 really busy doing. <laughs> I am impressed. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Thank you. I'm so impressed, impressed by you. Stop it. I'm so impressed by you. <laughs> I am We're impressed totally... by each other. There's a big love fest going on right now. <laughs> my diocese, my brother. <laughs> This, you know, I always, you know, when we first met, I, I, I it was like, it's such kindred spirits. And, um, and I remember was, uh, we on the phone talking for, um, I mean, literally for hours. I think it was like two hours we ended up talking and just sharing so. and, all, and catching up and sharing notes. And yeah. So I, I also know about another project, a project that you are working on. And that is. Let me bring that baby up, and here we go. It is. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You know, I, got, I got all these little buttons around here. Here we go. Working on uh, a coffee yes. table book. Yes, I am. And I, I'm not going to put too much out there about this project I, yet, I, I but I am, I am working on this really, really cool project with um, another photographer friend of mine who is absolutely amazing. And he's really just so inspiring to me because of all of the hip hop artists that he's covered and just seeing his work, it just definitely helps me to feel like, all right, that's exactly where you want to go with your work. So just to know that I'm going to be working on a project with him to really help realize my dreams, it's just amazing. So really, really, really looking forward to that. And it's all about hip hop. So it's all about hip hop. And speaking of hip hop, I'm going to, I'm going to put, share the screen with some of your work. And okay. I just want to take a couple of moments for you to just kind of give a story behind some of these photos. Sure, sure. Okay, let's do that. Um, I'm going to share the screen here and let's do that. And you can share some of the photos, share the stories behind them. Because I am a curious brother that loves to know <laughs> stories behind photos. Um, yeah. So th there was one that I wanted to, well, let me just go back to the first one. I thought that was so. So I that very first one. little Kim. Um, so everyone should know by now I am a big time hip hop head. Yes. You know, grew yes, up in the Bronx. Are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Bronx native, born and bred. Um, definitely love my hip hop music. And it's the music that I grew up on. It's the music that my brother and my sister and I used to sneak into the room with the tapes with Lottie Dottie and listen to. And, you know, that's what I was born and bred on. So 
to actually know that I am photographing some of these people who I used to listen to their tapes on repeat and <laughs> their CDs until they were skipping. Like Little Kim was everything to me before the Nicki Minaj, before Cardi B, before the Lottos, before any of these women now, there was Little Kim. And so mm. the day that I got to photograph her, I believe this was at Rock the Bells. Um, mm -hmm. I believe this was at Rock the Bells in 2022. And um, I thought that she actually looked wonderful, but it was right after she, there was this viral video that had come out um, with her doing that robot dance. <laughs> and so <laughs> the pictures that I captured here are really of her doing that robot dance to the Quiet Storm song, for those of you who know the Quiet Storm song, uh, the Quiet Storm that she did with Mob Deep. That's her with Little C's um, from the Junior Mafia. So wow. yeah. Definitely very touching moments. The Queen Bee, she was Queen Bee before Beyonce, For even though I'm a <laughs> yes, huge Beyonce was. fan. <laughs> but she was Queen Bee before Beyonce. So that's that's why that picture was so important to kind of make sure I captured that Queen Bee. Thing. Wow. And it was, um, you know, you do a lot of work. Uh, here's, here's another one. I mean, what's- Ah, uh, the Cold Crush Brothers. Yes. yes. So very interestingly, um, story about them, a lot of people don't know this, but Grandmaster Kaz and some of the other members of the Cold Crush Brothers, they were actually featured in this movie called Wild Style. And mm. that, the, that uh, beautiful statue that was done of me by John Ahern, um, mm. John Ahern is actually the twin brother of the director of the movie Wild Style. So it all kind of came full circle, but, they actually, Coke Rock was one of the first people whom he did one of those casts of. And then mm -hmm. also in addition to that, of course, Grandmaster Kaz is the one who wrote the lyrics to the Sugar Hill Gang's um, Rapper's Delight. And a lot of people don't know that. And he never got paid a cent. And so that entire post that I did that day was all about that Jay-Z lyric when he talks about the fact that he's overcharging people for what they did to the Cold Crush. He's talking about these mm -hmm. brothers right here that really were the foundation of hip hop. And like, I don't think that anybody would have known hip hop to be what it is today without these brothers. So wow. yeah, they were a tremendous influence. That's actually Grandmaster Kaz and Afion Crockett. And um, that's Charlie Mack there in the middle that does all of those huge um, hip hop shows out mm. in Philly. Wow. Yeah, you, uh, you, you have access. <laughs> and, you, know, you, know, I, you know, I I was in, you know, in the gallery on, uh, you know, we took our meetup group on at the gallery on um, Saturday. We all met up there. I didn't take them there. They, we all met there. And one of the, you know, I was there for the opening for um, the ICP um, gallery opening for the celebration of uh, photography from 1845 to 2019. And what I notice about all of these photos is their access. Most of these photographers have built relationships along the way with either their friends or their colleagues or introduced to someone and they build this great rapport and great trust. And then they are allowed to be part of their circle and they're able to capture yeah. some photos that we now see in history, like Martin Luther King and the people that were in his circle, or, you know, JFK, the people that were in his circle, or, you know, all these famous people have people in their circle that are photographing them. And the people yeah. that are photographing them at the time are not famous. They become <laughs> famous long after they have taken That's the That's true. That's true. That's true. You know, one of the things that I think that that's Dave East, actually. All the ladies will thank me for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was covering his um, his album release party for so and got granted the access. So, yeah, the access is definitely important. And if you by chance happen to go out, I'll show you another um, story and just kind of even pinpoint 
exactly how important it is to kind of know people. So if you scroll, you see that picture right there, the gentleman in the blue shirt, that's the large professor right there of the main source, right? So just another story about how things come full circle. So mm -hmm. as I was sharing earlier, Thurston Howell, um, who's the general of the low lives, he actually started the low lives. And those of you who don't know it, look it up. Um, but they definitely were a very inspirational brand and have a culture all into themselves, but they definitely are very, doing very positive things right now. Large Professor, I actually met him and happened to meet him because I was backstage as Jiggy's photographer. Jiggy was a group that was around in like the late 80s, early 90s. And they did this song called Toss It Up, Toss It Up, right? And Toss It Up. The song, the dancer, happens to be um, Prance, Prance Low. And he also is down with the low lives. And so he actually asked me to come and take photos of them when they went out to Atlantic City, which is how I got a lot of these photos that I got backstage. So wow. I happened to meet large professor backstage. And there's, if you scroll through, you'll see a picture. That picture right there is solely just based on the fact that I know Prance Lowe and he was able to have me backstage with him while I was doing all of that stuff. That's solely because of that. If I didn't have that connection with Prance, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And yeah, that's Large Professor there at a party, but he's amazing and probably one of the most prolific DJs of our time, of our era. But remember that song, Looking at the Front Door? I'm looking, looking at, at the front door. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. That's the large professor right there. <laughs> wow. Well, I tell you, you have, I, I, I went through your page and I've, got, I've gone to your website and everything. And I was just like, so, I was like, you take, I didn't realize how many concerts you photographed. I mean, I've gone to your a page, <laughs> but you photograph a lot of folks. Who's this dude yeah. over here? Who's that dude? None other than Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cube himself. I mean, Mr. Cube himself. I, and I love how you capture a lot of these folks. I mean, you really, you really do anticipate. You, you, I see that you, and this is coming from an event photographer, fellow event photographer. You have the ability to anticipate what's about to happen. I try. I try really, really hard to make sure that I do that because otherwise you might miss the shot. And I don't want to be one of those photographers either that's not thinking about the the images that I'm capturing. So I don't want to just be like a machine gun, Tommy gun photographer that's just like and taking exactly. pictures for no reason. I want to make sure that I take pictures with intent so that I don't go home with 10,000 photos to edit. <laughs> We <laughs> tell it intent with with purpose and intent. That's how we photograph events. Yes, that's right. Uh, with purpose and intent. <laughs> these photos are so cool. So cool. Thank how about, you. How about this? We uh, we open it up to the um to the to the audience, and if they have any sure. questions, uh, anyone anyway, got any questions, guys, we can, this is your time for our Q and A. It's Q and A time, so definitely. Q and A time. Question: You can put it in the comment box, or you can put it in the comment box in the Instagram audience. I see there's some people in Instagram, but if you want a better experience, come on over to YouTube, and you, that way you can put your information right into the comment box, and it will be it will live there. It will. You live. gotta sing. You gotta sing to them, Ron. You gotta oh, yeah, sing. You gotta come sing. on over. Come on over. Come on <laughs> over, baby. <laughs> My, my community gets the kick out of that. We do. <laughs> uh, Omar says, I know nothing about this life. He's saying, Omar, Omar, yeah, this is not your world. Uh, let's see here. Oh, all me, Robinson's in the building. A couple of folks are there in the Instagram world. But come on over to Touch, um, Touch Base Daily over in um, our YouTube, and you can ask some questions. Here's a question from Gwendolyn. Can we talk about the earrings? <laughs> yes, yes. So these earrings, believe it or not, um, I got right after going to the UHHM, that's the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Um, they had a, a block party 
back in August to celebrate the uh, birthday of hip hop. And I went to their um, outing and there was a woman who was selling these really cool earrings right outside. And, you know, when you're in Rome, right? When in Bronx, do as Bronx people do. I whipped out my money real quick, put down five, bam, earrings mine. I was happy as, you know, picking you know what. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. I see that also. Um, Gwendolyn says, memories, such great hip hop memories and music. Uh, you took us yeah, down just sharing some of the information. I mean, it's one thing to, it's one thing to take a photo, but it's so cool when you can connect with the photographer and learn the story behind the photo. It's just to me, it's so intriguing because you get to you get the unique experience as an audience, as a person that's watching the you know, the photo or viewing the photo. Um, to get the mindset of the individual or the photographer when they captured yeah. that scene. So cool. Any 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 questions? Any yeah, this any questions out there? That was only one question from Gwendolyn. Any other questions? I'll okay, share a little fun. something. I'll, I'll share something if if that's okay while we're waiting for oh, some yeah, questions. You can share. Oh, he, oh Dorian says drop the drop the YouTube YouTube link. I'm gonna do that right now while you share something. Go ahead, share. Okay. So I do think that it's really important to continue to be inspired. Um, and I think the community such as this one, for those of you, this might be your first time listening. If you're a, a photographer, it's so incredibly important to be a member of communities such as this one that really, really help to strengthen your sense of community, your sense of identity, your sense of who you are as yourself as a photographer. And again, not so that you can compare yourself against other people, but you don't know what you don't know until you don't know that you don't know it, right? There so go. there's so many things, for example, you inspired me to do my first lives last month. Um, I saw you doing all of these lives and I was like, you know what? <laughs> Ron is doing all of these lives. I can get out there and do lives too. And I went down to Absolutely. Rockefeller Center and I was like, you know what? Let me do my live just like Ron did his live, but it's <laughs> being inspired. You never know where inspiration is going to come yes. from. And now I love doing lives. Like I'm forever up there yakking and talking. It's one of the things that people, some people don't necessarily love about me, but I happen to like the fact that I'm a chatty Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I see our tribe seems to have a lot of chatty Kathy. We have a lot of chatties in our in our community. I'm I am definitely one for the gift of gab. I can talk all day. And me uh, too. And I think this platform has kind of like landed me in my right my right home. Uh, I love talking. I love sharing. And I'm very curious about people. And I'm curious about what they're doing. And so here I am, Touch Base Daily. Um, it started out as a little selfish uh, endeavor, as in just making allowing people to know I'm alive. To now look, look where it's grown. So it's become a community, which I did not expect. So that is what we do. We just get out there and be inspired. And it, the greatest thing is inspiring others. And um, I love doing it every day. Here's another question from um, G R Houston. She has a question. Not that it matters, but what lenses are being used at these concerts? Um, it depends. It depends on how close I am to the stage, I guess, and what my level of access is. But mm -hmm. um, I can shoot, you know, usually my trusty lens right now, I think, is like my 24 to 85. Um, mm -hmm. I usually like that a lot to do concerts. Um, I do happen to like my 70 to 300 sometimes when I, I want to do some close ups. Um, I really, it just really, Oh, we lost it. Come back, come back, signal, come back. Okay. Got a little signal problem there. I'm sure she'll be right back. But that was definitely, there she is, there she is. She's back. There you go. I'm back. One other thing, too, I wanted to say in terms of insp uh, inspiration, something that my coaches and my mentors taught me, and this is a really, 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 really good um, tip, but mm -hmm. if anyone is familiar with the app Flipboard, um, I would recommend that everyone use Flipboard. And what is Flipboard? It's just a way of getting your daily dose of news in the morning. Um, take 10 minutes out, 
and you can kind of specialize you can tell it what kind of news you want so I, all the things that are of interest to me whether or not it's um outer space and i love things about science and i love things about egypt and i love things about traveling and i love things about technology and all of these different things it comes up as a flip so you can flip through different news articles and just for 10 or 15 minutes a day just really just inspire yourself with other things that are going on in the world outside of yourself. But then mm. it also allows you to be an, inter an interesting conversationalist, right? Tomorrow yes, I'm yes. going to photograph the um, Homage Awards that's going to be honoring um, Ralph McDaniels of Video Music Box. I'm going to be wow. pressed there for the event. And yeah, what's really cool about doing that is that now when I go through Flipboard, I'll have interesting things to talk to them about because hip hop things are one of the things that come up for me. So if I meet someone, I can say, hey, you heard about so-and-so and so, you know, but it helps to make me an interesting conversationalist. <laughs> I always say it is important to know the latest news. <laughs> you know, one is, you know, being, uh, I'm a networker. I believe in going networking and one, People say, Ron, you're a news, obviously, this, I, I do everything I love. I'm a news junkie. I like learning about people and culture and foods and like you, like yourself, traveling and all that good stuff. So when I'm at a engagement, a, you know, some kind of networking event, I really, I really can't go around the room and talk about anything. I really, and I love that I can do it. I, I challenge anyone that wants to be in a networking environment to really do something like Flipboard, I have uh, Associated Press in the morning. So oh, I love Press, AP, yes. Yeah, AP sends me my email every morning and CNN also gives me my every morning five important things to, to know in, in the day. Uh, and so I have my CNN, I have my uh, AP. Now I'm going to go back to using my Flipboard. I used to use Flipboard back in the day. I just haven't used it in a while. Um, I love but, it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nice and one of the things, one of the things that my coach told me to do is that, you know, for 10 minutes every morning, it doesn't matter yes. if, you know, you're in the bathroom or if you're just sitting down, like eating, drinking your tea or whatever it is, but everyone has like 10 minutes where they can just focus on themselves, especially if it's going to better yourself to be able to engage in conversations and engage with conversing with people. So mm -hmm. I would strongly encourage everyone to do it. It's definitely one of the things that helped kind of get me out of my fog and out of my funk and just realize that there is more than myself out there in the world. There are all of these other really cool things that are happening and it might inspire or, or pique your interest to learn about something. So wow. I'm always for <laughs> Well, my dear, you know, you and I could talk way past this hour. All day, so. all day, <laughs> <laughs> all day, you know, every day. <laughs> I, I mean, we got a lot covered in this conversation. I'm so glad to have you on here. Is there, just give me one, if there's one thought that you can leave with uh, a young person or, uh, or older person that is going to attempt this journey in photography, what would be that one piece of advice that you would give them? Hmm. One piece of advice that I would give to people who were starting out on their photography journey or any kind of journey, it's really to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. to find the things that really center you and make you whole, because then you're not going to be looking outside for praise. You're not going to be looking outside for other people to build you up doesn't matter what other people will say about you at that point. It, it won't matter. As long as you have knowledge of self and you believe in who you are, it's probably the most important thing in any endeavor, in any journey. So I'd say that. Wow. And wow. On that note, guys, thank <laughs> you, Amparo. Guys, if you love this moment with Amparo, please give some love. Put some likes inside the like box. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to us as well. Subscribe. And um, but definitely put some applause in there, some some emojis. We want to see what how you how, what this what did this mean to you? <laughs> I can tell you, I every time I talk to Amparo, I learn something new every time, every time. And uh, I think you all learn something new today as well. And um, and we're gonna really close out this um, this this uh, Wisdom Wednesday as we always do. And I'll uh, just um, man. Amparo, I just want to say thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you for just really having such a wonderful and welcoming community that's just always stood for something that's positive and inspiring every day without fail. You are there at 1115. So thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. And thank you guys for joining us. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.